ready to dive into one of the most iconic UFO cases out there. Always up for a good mystery, especially one as big as the Phoenix Lights. Thousands of people across Arizona seeing strange lights in the sky. It's 1997, but it feels like this story just refuses to stay in the past. It's like everyone's looking for a solid answer, right? So, something more <laughs> concrete than just, well, something was up there. You hit the nail on the head. And the fact that so many people saw something that night, well, that's what makes the Phoenix Lights more than just another UFO story. So you dug into some articles about this, sent over some excerpts from one in particular called... Uh, Based in text. Cape Shot. Yeah. I thought it did a good job of draking down... Not just what people saw, but also, like you said, the impact of having so many witnesses. Makes you wonder, if only a handful of people had said they'd seen something, would this even be a conversation we're still having? Right. Like, would it even be on our radar? Doubt it. Okay, so Arizona, 1997. Set the scene for us. What exactly happened that night? So it wasn't just one quick flash in the sky and then poof, gone. We're talking two distinct events. Almost like, imagine someone setting up a one-two punch but cosmic. Okay, I'm intrigued. Lay it on us. First up, you've got this massive, and I mean massive, V-shaped formation just cruising across the sky. Hold on, V-shaped, like a V. What are we talking, some kind of giant bird formation, but with like spaceships? You're not too far off with that description, actually. Yeah. People describe these lights all in this perfect V formation, just gliding silently across a huge chunk of Arizona. Silently, no roaring engines, no sonic booms, nothing. Nope. Dead silent, according mm -hmm. to most of the reports. It's one of those details that makes this case so strange. Imagine being out for a walk, looking up and seeing that. Completely silent, moving with purpose. Talk about eerie. Okay, yeah, I can see why that would freak people out a little. But we've got two events, right? Well, what's the second act of this cosmic show? Right, so later that same night, different vibe completely. We've got reports of stationary lights. These ones are just hanging out over Phoenix itself. Wait, hold on. So first, this giant V thing, silent, moving across the state. And then later, just lights chilling over the city. Yeah, and this is where things get really interesting because were these two events connected somehow? Or was there something about Arizona that night that drew in, shall we say, a diverse audience? Like someone hit the cosmic on switch and everything weird decided to show up. <laughs> something like that. But the big question becomes, what were these things and who or what was piloting them? And that's what we're going to try to figure out in this deep dive. I mean, it's one thing to talk about shapes in the sky, lights moving around, but to really get into the heart of a mystery like this, you've got to go to the people who were there, right? Absolutely. Eyewitness accounts, they're like the breadcrumbs in this whole thing. You have to follow them to see where they lead. And paste a text. That article you sent over, it's got some pretty vivid descriptions of what people saw that night. Stuff that honestly sends chills down your spine. Oh, yeah. Like what? Give me an example. What kind of stuff are we talking about here? So one person described it as, and I'm quoting here, a giant boomerang with these massive lights just gliding across the sky. No sound, no engine noise, just complete silence. See, that's what gets me that detail about the silence. You'd think something that big, moving that deliberately, it'd have to make some kind of noise, right? Right. It's like the laws of physics just took a night off. Exactly. But that silence, it comes up again and again in these eyewitness accounts. And I got to say, it adds a whole other layer of weird to this whole thing. It's like if you wanted to scare someone, make something big and loud. Yeah. Right. But this is almost like whoever or whatever was behind the Phoenix Lights wanted to be seen but not heard. Maybe they just like to keep things low key. Or maybe their muffler fell off. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But OK, so we've got all these people seeing this, well, thing in the sky, but not everyone's buying into the whole alien spaceship theory, right? Oh, for sure. And that's the thing. Even with something as seemingly mind-blowing as giant lights in the sky, you're always going to have a range of reactions, right? Mm. Some folks, they see something unexplained and their minds go straight to aliens. Others, they're looking for a more, shall we say, grounded explanation. So what were the more, let's say, skeptical folks saying? What were they chalking this up to? Well, you had everything from people saying it was a hoax, some elaborate prank, to folks who blamed it on like hallucinations or maybe one too many episodes of the X-Files. You know, back then that show was all the rage. It was a different time. Right. But the thing is, even with all those different theories floating around, even with people wanting to explain it away as something more ordinary, there's this core set of details that keeps popping up. The shape, the movement, that eerie silence. It's all just a little too consistent to ignore. Okay, so let's say 
for the sake of argument, that it wasn't a giant flock of extraterrestrial geese flying in formation. What are we left with? I mean, what are some of the other explanations people have come up with? Well, get ready to go down the rabbit hole, because the theories about what really caused the Phoenix Lights, they run the gamut. Hit me. What are we working with here? Right. So you've got your more, let's call them conventional explanations. We're talking weather balloons, military flares, even things like ball lightning or some kind of weird atmospheric phenomenon. Okay. So some people are saying, look, it's Arizona. Weird stuff happens in the desert. Exactly. And some of those explanations, they might hold water if it weren't for, you know, those pesky details that just don't quite fit. Like the whole giant V-shaped object silently gliding across the entire state thing. That's the one. <laughs> Hard to explain that away with a weather balloon. Yeah. And well, then, of course, you've got the stationary lights over Phoenix later that night. It's like, did the weather balloon get tired and decide to take a break? I don't think so. So if it wasn't some atmospheric hiccup, and we're maybe, just maybe, setting aside the whole alien spaceship theory for now, what are we left with? What else could explain something this big, this strange, this witnessed? It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, you know? Some of these explanations, they just don't quite match up with what people say they saw. It's like that with a lot of these UFO cases, right? Yeah. You've got the event itself, and then you've got the explanations, and sometimes it feels like they're happening in two completely different realities. It's like parallel universes, but for explanations. So where does that leave us? I mean, if we're talking about something truly unexplained, something potentially, well, out there, we've got to talk about the government, right? Can't have a good UFO mystery without bringing in the government. It's practically a rule at this point. Exactly. And the Phoenix Lights, this wasn't just some blip on their radar. We're talking about thousands of people witnessing something strange, something unexplained. You'd think there'd be some kind of official response, some attempt to get to the bottom of it. And there was, eventually. But... How do I put this? It wasn't exactly a shining example of transparency. Okay, so spill the tea. What went down when the government got involved? Well, you've got then Governor Fife Symington. He comes out pretty quickly, dismisses the whole thing as a hoax, tells people to move along, nothing to see here. Sounds about right. Right. But here's where it gets interesting. Years later, Symington changes his tune, admits that he did see the lights that night. And guess what? He couldn't explain them. Whoa, hold on. So we've got a government official, someone who initially dismissed the whole thing, coming back years later and saying, nope, I saw it too, and I don't know what it was. You've got it. Yeah. And that, my friend, is what we call a plot twist. <laughs> it makes you wonder, what did he see that made him completely change his stance? And more importantly, what does that say about how information about these kinds of events is handled? It's like that saying, right? Sometimes the cover-up is more intriguing than the crime itself. But even if we're not talking about a full-blown conspiracy here, you got to wonder, why the initial dismissal? Why not just say, hey, we're looking into it, even if you don't have any answers yet? It's a good question. Yeah. And it speaks to this larger issue of how governments deal with the unexplained, the potentially paradigm shifting. I mean, imagine the panic, the chaos, if a government came out and said, yeah, we don't know what those giant lights in the sky were, but... Uh, maybe aliens. The world would lose its collective mind. Exactly. So there's this balancing act, right, between acknowledging the unknown and maintaining a sense of order and control. And sometimes that means being less than transparent, even if it fuels speculation and distrust. So are we saying that sometimes a lack of explanation is in itself a kind of explanation? That sometimes the silence speaks volumes? It's a possibility, and it makes you think about the Phoenix Lights in a whole new light, right? Because even if we never definitively prove what those lights were, the event itself, the reactions, the explanations, and even the lack of explanations, they all tell us something about ourselves, about how we make sense of the world, and about how much we still don't know. It's like the Phoenix Lights. They're this giant Rorschach test in the sky. Everyone sees something different. Everyone interprets it through their own lens. And maybe that's the point. Maybe the real mystery isn't what those lights were, but what they mean to us. What they tell us about our own beliefs, our hopes, our fears about the universe, and our place in it. Deep stuff. It's like what started as a deep dive into one of the most iconic UFO cases out there has turned into a deep dive into the nature of belief itself. It makes you think, what else is out there just waiting to be discovered, or maybe rediscovered, in a new light? And that's the beauty of it all, isn't it? The mystery keeps us curious keeps us asking questions, keeps us looking up at the stars with a sense of wonder. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have those answers. Or maybe, even more exciting, we'll have even bigger and better questions to ponder. 